Hello and welcome to this GCSE explainer on sustainable food supplies. Over the last couple of sessions we've looked at how food can be unsustainable. You've got a picture here of Almeria in Spain. Greenhouse agriculture, very heavily dependent on water use, uses lots of plastic, pesticides, insecticides, huge amounts of uh, fuel used as well in terms of crude oil. And then here you've got some soil erosion caused by modern farming. And we've got examples of water use and crop spraying. Um, all, all unsustainable in terms of the impact on the, on the environment. So the focus of this lesson is on sustainable food supply, food that's produced in ways that avoid damaging natural resources, provide social benefits like good quality food and safe and healthy products, and contribute to local economies. The first area we could look at is permaculture, and that's just a combination of two words, perma for permanent, and culture relates to agriculture or farming. A permaculture involves developing agricultural systems that cooperate with nature rather than working against it. So I guess it's an agriculture that respects the plants and animals that are produced. So the 12 principles are there in that cycle. So you'd observe and interact nature, use the plants to catch and store energy. You must obtain a yield. You look at self-regulation and accept feedback. So if things aren't growing in your garden, can you shift and change the position of those plants to... Um, actually get them to grow in a, in a place use and value renewable resources and services try and produce no waste design for patterns to details integrate your plants rather than segregate them so you can see there on the image there's lots of different types of plants in different parts of the garden all integrated together use small and slow solutions and use the edges and the marginal areas of the of the garden so that's permaculture and it ties in with three principles, care for the earth, care for people, and offering a fair share. Organic farming is another way that we could go. You can see uh, some nice images there. Um, cook organic, not the planet. And uh, organic farming, don't forget, is certified by the Soil Association. So the, 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 it is about care for the, the soil as well. So organic farming um, is... A massive farming sector in the UK it's worth nearly two billion pounds and it's probably the way forward to reduce chemical and crude oil use and making our farm more sustainable it reduces the intensification of food production allowing the land to rest it encourages a more local approach from farmers artificial fertilizers and pesticides are largely banned and the farmers have to develop soil fertile soil by rotating crops and using natural composts, manures, clovers, that sort of thing. There are strict regulations known as standards to define what the farmers can and can't do. And um, it uses biological pest control rather than pesticides. Okay, so you can see there we've got some ducks in Japan and they are used to eat insects and weeds within rice paddies. They oxygenate the water, they stir up the soil and obviously when they poo into the water, that's a natural fertiliser. The other thing that could be done is uh, urban farm initiatives, so actually creating spaces within urban areas to produce food. So you can see an urban roof farm here in, in Chicago, and um, the idea there is to make maximise the use of space within our cities to produce food in those, in those areas. Um, the northern UK town of Middlesbrough, where I'm from, they had an, an urban farming scheme, scheme uh, and the US city of Seattle also established a, a Beacon Hill food forest, which will be full of edible plants and fruit trees. The other thing we would consider is seasonal food consumption. Uh, a lot of people eat things out of season, like strawberries in, in the middle of winter, and they, they, they don't grow in the UK in that season. So there is a growing movement in the UK for people to eat seasonal vegetables and fruit wherever possible in order to reduce the number of food miles. Because obviously, if we eat strawberries from northern Morocco in the middle of winter, they have to travel here to the United Kingdom. So seasonal food involves producing food locally without the need for expensive heated greenhouses or all those food imports. Local food sourcing is also becoming more popular. And you can keep an eye out for the red tractor logo on your food uh, for food that's produced in the in the UK and there you can see an infographic on what's in season and when so what you can eat in spring summer autumn and winter 
You could also look out for this logo and try and eat fish and meat from sustainable sources. Um, so the meat industry is unsustainable in, in, in many ways, um, and I'm as guilty as, as many of eating of eating meat. Feed Feeding animals grain consumes a lot of resources. Animals can be kept in very poor conditions in enclosed spaces. And keeping animals at such high numbers produces a lot of methane and CO2. Uh, so um, we can be more sustainable that and use free range methods where the animals are free to roam around the fields within the farm. We've got labeling systems as well where um, people know how their food has been produced. Um, fishing is another one that has a really big impact on the environment. Um, we've overfished for many, many decades. Um, and now we're trying to go for more sustainable fishing with insurers to sustainable stocks, minimising the environmental impact of fishing without you know, banning dragnet fishing or um, not having trawling for shellfish, which destroys the, this, the seabed. Stopping illegal fishing is another way as well, and then uh, managing the actual fishing practices. And then the last area is, is reducing food waste and, and losses. A lot of food is, is simply thrown away before it's even been eaten. Um, in richer nations, that um, food waste, a lot of it comes uh, at the point of consumption. Whereas in poorer nations, for example, sub-Saharan Africa, there you can see a lot of the food waste is in production and, and handling and storage. Um, in the UK, we throw away 7 million tonnes of food and drink from our homes every year. And wasting that food costs around £470 a year. So to combat that, you could do some of these things. Uh, buying ugly fruit and vegetables, or the, the ones that the supermarkets don't really want to sell. Um, because they don't look attractive, but they're perfectly edible food. You could reduce your portion sizes, which means you don't throw food into the, the bin. Plan your weekly shop's a good idea as well, because that way you you don't buy things that you don't need and won't eat. You can compost your waste in your garden. Use the leftovers for the, the next day and, and, and so on. Okay, so in terms of tasks, you can describe the environment on the Urban Farming Initiative, and have you seen any local examples of those? You can have a look at that video and think about what arguments are put forward about the, the debate about organic farming. Have a look at the graph there and, and discuss food waste and why we get differences in, in those food wastes. And then the last task is to complete this table. So those are the six areas for sustainable food supplies. What are they and what benefits do they bring? And then just to finish up, you might finish uh, with what, what can you do and changes can you make? so that your food consumption is more sustainable. As usual, there's a worksheet for that, where you can enter your answers, and there's a, the, you know, you've got the Cool Geography web page as well to, to get extra help. We'll just finish up with a little joke. What happened after an explosion at a French cheese factory? All that was left was debris. <laughs>